Hi, and welcome to TouchView Interactive. Today we're going to take a look at our new Gen 4 Ultra Series panel and specifically focus on the S-Rite whiteboarding software. So this is meant to really just jump in, take some quick notes, be able to populate it with some content, and then save and share that out. So we'll launch into the S-Rite software, and you'll notice right away that we have our toolbar down below. So let's take a step-by-step -step look at what's in the toolbar. So from my pen tools, that's going to allow me to go in and I can select a single pen. I can change my line weighting thickness or change colors if I want. Uh, and then that's just going to give me that basic pen tool capability with that. Keep in mind also that all of our uh, pen tools and writing recognize gesture erasing. So if I just want to kind of clear that out, I can flatten my hand and it automatically turns into an eraser for me. Uh, I have the marker, so that's also going to give me more of an opaque uh, kind of line with that. So again, the same thing where I can just go ahead and clear that out. Another way to clear out content is just to simply choose the erase button uh, and then just slide to clear the screen with that. Uh, this tool is the stroke mode tool, so that's going to give me a little finer point with this. So if I really want to kind of get some uh, really detailed content with that, I can uh, be able to go ahead and use that stroke mode pen. That's going to give me that really fine point along with that also. Now, the multi-pin tool function, this is going to pertain to our styluses. So each panel comes with a couple of styluses. Uh, you see I'm lazy, I tend to just use my finger, but a lot of times people like to use the stylus. Now there is a thin tip and a thick tip to the stylus. That's important because within this dual mode, I could go in and set multiple colors on the thin tip and the thick tip. So how I do that is I'm gonna take that thin tip and I'm gonna select that on my panel. And now that's going to allow me to go in with this and I can change uh, into a different color if I want. And now I can go back to that thick tip side and be able to select that. Uh, and then that's gonna allow me to maybe pick a different color with that uh, thick tip side. So now when I use the thin tip, uh, that's going to allow me to have that yellow color on the thin tip. Uh, and then if I flip that around, it's gonna have that green color. So that's how you can kind of differentiate uh, some content that's on the panel with that. So I'll just go ahead and clear that out. Uh, another uh, tool that we have here uh, is our erase marker feature. So again, if I maybe uh, make a markup of any kind of content, let me uh, clear that out, change colors here. So you can see that a little better. But if I use uh, the erasable function, that's just gonna allow me some really fine point uh, erasability with selecting that particular pen tool and the erase tool. The next pen tool, this is very useful. This is going to convert anything that I write onto the panel into text for me. So for example, if I just go ahead and type the word text, then it's automatically gonna convert that into block letters for me so I can do a nice heading up there and just convert that to nice clean text with that. If I wanna clear that out, again, I can just slide and clear the screen and erase that function. So those are just some of the pen tools that we offer. Uh, play around with those, you'll get a chance to get familiar with those. We've already talked about the erasability uh, feature and just to clean the screen. Now, for example, maybe I wanna have multi-touch capability on my panel. So what I'm gonna do is select my pen tool, and now with my hand tool, I can go in and select that, and that's gonna give me that multi-touch capability. So our panels now feature up to 40 points of touch control. Again, still have that same gesture erasing capability. And if I grab that hand tool one more time, now I can turn it into what I call infinite canvas mode. So I can just kind of bump that content right up. So if I start to run out of room, I can just kind of bump that content and then just continue on with my list. I can do things like pinch to zoom. So you really do have this infinite canvas that I can populate all kinds of content directly up on my panel. Uh, another tool that we have here, and we'll come back to the selection tool in just a bit, but uh, we can also bring in uh, things like rulers. Uh, if I want to kind of angle that at any direction, I can. I can bring in triangles. So if I'm doing any kind of uh, geometry or anything like that, that's handy to have some of those tools. And then just to close out of those, I can just hit that X and it's just going to close out of that content with that. Uh, I can also bring in any kind of uh, stereoscopic uh, shapes and figures. So for example, if I wanted to just quickly draw uh, a box like that, I can bring that in or maybe just uh, a circle with that and then be able to select that pen tool, uh, maybe choose a different color and then that's gonna allow me to annotate and mark up and highlight any kind of content directly with that. So pretty cool to have those new uh, templates and feature sets built in. Uh, next is going to be the grid line. So this is how I can bring in uh, grid lines real quickly. So if I just want to create a grid uh, and then pull up my pen tool uh, and then be able to create some kind of uh, number layout with this, uh, that's going to give me the ability uh, to go ahead and just create a quick grid with this uh, and kind of space that out 
along with that. I can also go in now and I can use the selection tool uh, and that's gonna allow me then to go ahead and select any of this kind of content. And then I can place this and reallocate it and place it wherever I want to. So I could even, if I wanna go ahead and uh, select a copy of that, I can hit that little paper sheet there uh, and then I can paste that and just quickly make a copy of anything directly on my panel using that selection tool with that. So that's really handy if you wanna duplicate multiple content on the panel. The next tool we'll take a look at uh, is my file menu system. So that's all going to allow me to bring in image files, I can bring in video clips, I can insert PDF files. Uh, we've now given you templates for mind maps and flow charts. I can even go into split screen mode in this mode. So with this in our older software, it uh, really only allowed me to have two or three zones. Now I can have up to uh, two zones, three zones, four zones, or six zones. And that's really comes in handy uh, if you put the panel into that tabletop mode to lay the panel flat where you can have multiple students engaged uh, and interacting uh, with that at the same time. So these truly are two independent zones. So you can have uh, maybe one person working over on this side and you got the red team working on some content, maybe some math problems. Uh, and these two zones don't really intersect with each other. And then to kind of clear this out, the same thing, I'm just gonna swipe to clear the screen. Kind of gives me that dry erase board effect and just clears that out. Once I go ahead and sign out or exit out of all of this, uh, it's just gonna go ahead and take me back directly into that SWRITE software. So the next tool within this, uh, again, maybe I wanna insert a, a PDF file. So let's create uh, just a solar system layout here. So for example, I had some PDFs that I stored uh, directly onto the Android side of the panel. So I can go ahead and bring that directly in uh, and place that, grab that selection tool and now that's gonna allow me to go ahead and kind of manipulate, pinch and zoom, uh, so that, that I can make that a little bit bigger with that. So that's a great way to be able to insert any kind of PDF documents or anything like that. So once I get some content populated up here, we give you a few ways to be able to save and share content out. One way to do that is if I come down to my little toolbar down in the lower left-hand corner, I can grab that uh, QR code and that's gonna export everything out. Save that as a PNG file. I can also mail that out if I want to and just put in your email address and be able to send that out directly as well. Uh, that's gonna allow me to scan that with a tablet or a phone uh, and just be able to grab that file and go uh, directly from my SWRITE software with this. Another way that I can save content is this little three line ellipsis menu here. That's going to allow me to say, I wanna go ahead and save this. Uh, and I have two choices. I can save this back to my local disk or I can save it to cloud storage. So let's take a look at how we do that because I wanna go ahead and I wanna set some content up uh, kind of ahead of time so that I can go ahead and be able to save content directly to a folder that I want. So we'll just jump back to my home screen here and I'm gonna go into the file manager. So now that I'm in the file manager, this shows me all of the folders and files that live on the Android side of the storage system. So with this, what I'm gonna to wanna to do is I wanna create a new folder, a folder that's mine, so I can always save my content directly back into my folder and not get confused on where things get saved. So I'm just gonna call this uh, Scott's class and hit confirm, and then I'll go and verify, and there indeed there's Scott's class in my local storage with that. So now that gives me a destination of where I want to always save any of my content, especially with SWRITE files. So if I launch back into SWRITE with this, now I can choose to go into save mode and that's going to allow me to go to uh, my local disk here and I can save that directly back to Scott's class. Now I have a couple of choices here. I can save it as an IWB file. What is that? That's an interactive whiteboard file. That's gonna allow me to open this later and amend it and edit this original file. So maybe I have content that I wanna add on Monday and then Tuesday and throughout the week sequentially. Uh, you'll definitely wanna save it as an IWB file so you can go back and edit that content. Uh, I can also save it as a P and, uh, PDF file or a PNG. Uh, that's just gonna be a flattened image and I would only be able to import that at a later time. So I'm gonna say I wanna save that as an IWB file and I'm gonna go ahead and hit save. Uh, and now it goes ahead and gives me that save process. So now I can go back directly into that file system in my file manager and go to Scott's class. There's that IWB file that we just saved for our solar system layout. So maybe instead of saving it locally to the Android storage, maybe I wanna save it to my cloud storage. So we'll go back to this three line ellipsis menu and I'm gonna select save but instead of local disk, I'm gonna choose net disk. 
So that's going to allow me now to go in and be able to add that to my Google Drive or Microsoft OneDrive account. One important step that I wanna do before I select my account though, is we'll go back and we'll select uh, and go ahead and give this that file name. So again, we're gonna name this one more time because I'm saving it up to cloud storage. I'll name it Solar System. Hit OK. And now I wanna save that directly back to uh, my Google Drive. So I've already logged into my Google Drive account. Uh, when you first go to log into that, it's just gonna launch a browser, ask you for your username and password, uh, and then you can log in. Also notice here, it's asking me to choose an account. So I can use another account. So if you have multiple teachers, uh, they can go ahead and use their account and be able to select uh, whose account you wanna save to. So in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and choose my account. And I've created a folder called Touch View directly onto my Google Drive so I know where I can always save that. So I'm just gonna go ahead and select that Touch View folder uh, and I'm gonna hit the confirm button and now it's gonna upload that and save that directly to my cloud storage so I can come back later and retrieve that uh, and not have to maybe clog up a bunch of storage on the Android side of the panel. So that's a great way to be able to utilize cloud storage uh, directly within the SWRite software.